In this video, we're going to learn how to find the length of an array using the size of operator in C. So if we have an array like this, int array nine is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Here we have an int array of length nine that's been initialized with the values one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We could find the length of this array using the size of operator. The size of operator is going to return the amount of bytes that are used to store the operand that is given. So for example, if we said int length is equal to size of, and then we had the array here divided by the size of an int. Size of is going to return the size in bytes that it takes to store this array. Size of is also going to return the size in bytes that it takes to store an int. Now we have an array that's made up of nine ints. So if we divide the size in bytes that it takes to store the entire array by the size in bytes that it takes to store an individual int, this is going to give us the total length of the array. We could output it here. We'll have printf length colon percent d backslash n and we'll put the length. And if we save, compile, and run our program, we get a length of nine, which is correct. To better understand how this is working, we could output the individual values that are returned by size of array and size of int. So for example, we could have printf size of array colon percent d backslash n, and here we'll output size of array. We'll do the same thing with size of int. So I'll have printf size of int colon percent d backslash n, and then we'll have size of int here. And if we save, compile, and run our program, we get that the size of the array is 36 bytes, and we also see that it takes four bytes to store one int value. So 36 divided by four gives us a length of nine, which makes sense because the array stores nine int values, and it takes four bytes to store one int value so nine times four would give us 36 bytes total. Now, one thing with the way we've done this is that we have size of int here. The only problem with this is if we later change the type of the array, this is not going to work. So let's say that later on, we decide we need a double array. So then here I could have, instead of int, double. Now, if we save, compile, and run our program, we actually get a warning here. We also get an incorrect length value we get a length of 18. Let's check out that warning. The warning here says, expression does not compute the number of elements in this array. Element type is double, not int. So what's going on here is even the compiler can tell what we're trying to do, that we're trying to find the length of the array. And it's trying to warn us that this is not going to work because we're dividing the size of the array by the size of int which is the number of bytes that it takes to store an int, but our array has type double. So what we could do instead is put size of array at index zero here. And what this will do is give us the size in bytes that it takes to store the first element in the array. So that way, if our array changes types, this will automatically adjust because if our array was an int array, the size that it takes to store the first element in the array would be the same size that it takes to store one int. But if the array was of type double, then the size that it takes to store the first element in the array would be the same size that it takes to store a double value. Let's try this out. We could save compile and run a program and the warning goes away and now we get an array length of nine and we get the correct answer. Just to better understand how this is working, let's actually output the size of double and the size of the array at the index zero. So we'll have printf size of double colon percent d backslash n, and we'll output size of double. And we'll also have printf size of the array at index zero colon percent d backslash n. And then we'll have size of the array at index zero here. And then if we save, compile, and run a program, we can see that the size of an int is four bytes. The size of a double is eight bytes. That's why when we switched the type of our array from int to double, the size of the array went from 36 
to 72 bytes. So when we divide 72 by the size of a double, 8, we get 9, which is correct. But what we can do instead is divide the size of the array, which is 72, by the size of the first element in the array, which is going to be 8 in this case, because that's going to be a double value, because our array has type double. Now, if we were to switch our array back to an int, this will automatically adjust. So we can save, compile, and run our program, and we also get a length of 9. The size of the array is now 36 bytes again, because the array is of type int. But the size of the element at the first index in the array is 4 bytes, because that element is an int, and it takes 4 bytes to store an int. So using this approach here is going to be more flexible. If we need to change the type of the array, it's still going to work. Now it might be a bit of a pain to have to write out this expression every single time we want to get the length of an array. What we could do is create a function like macro to help us with this. We could have number define, and then we'll have length a, size of a, divided by the size of a at the index zero. So this here is a function like macro. A C compiler has what's called a preprocessor phase. And a function like macro is handled by the preprocessor phase of the C compiler. So this looks like a function, but really it's describing how a text replacement operation should occur during the preprocessor phase of the compilation of our program. So for example, we could replace this expression with length array. So during the preprocessor phase of our program's compilation, this is going to be recognized as this macro here. And this is going to be replaced with this text here. Only array is going to be used in place of a. So we'll end up with this. The size of array divided by the size of the array at index zero. Exactly what we had before. Only now we can express it like this. We could also reuse this same function like macro with different arrays. So we could use this to find the length of arrays of different names and it would work fine. We could use this in multiple places as well. So for example, let's say we want to create a loop to output the elements in this array. We could have four int i is equal to zero, i is less than, and then we'll have length array here with i++. So here, we're creating a fairly standard loop with a counter variable i that's going to be incremented from zero by one with each loop iteration up until the length of the array. Only here, we're getting the length of the array using our function like macro. We could then have printf, the array, percent %d is equal to percent %d backslash n, we'll output i here for the array index, and the array at the index i for the actual value. We could save, compile, and run this, and we'll get a printout of the values in our array. So again, what's going to happen is that during the preprocessor phase of the compilation of our program, this function like macro here is going to be replaced with this text here, only with array in place of a. Now, one thing you might be concerned about is if we use this function like macro all over the place in our code, are we going to be doing many calculations to determine the length of the array as our program is executing? But that's not actually the case. The size of operator is actually going to do its work at compile time in cases like these. That means the size of operator is going to return, say, 36 bytes in the case of the size of the array. It's going to do that at compile time, not at runtime, because that information is known at compile time when a program is being compiled. That means by the time our code is actually going to execute, we don't actually have any operations at all occurring here. This will ultimately be replaced with nine, and that's it. So there's not going to be any performance cost for doing extra calculations, say, at runtime by using this approach, which might be a concern that you may have, and that would be a valid concern, but it's not going to be the case. 
and it's just because the compiler is actually going to use the size of operator to pre-calculate all of this for us. So by the time our program is in the form of an executable that we run, these calculations have already been done. Now another approach, rather than using the size of operator, is to store the length of the array in a constant. So for example, we could have a preprocessor constant, size. We could say number define size nine. Then we could just use this preprocessor constant size wherever we need to know the length of the array. We could even use it here when we declare our array. We could also use it here in this loop. So because this is also a preprocessor macro, during the pre-compilation phase of our program, size is going to be replaced with nine everywhere in our program. So size here would be replaced with nine and size here would also be replaced with nine. But this way, if we want to change the length of the array, we could just update it in one place. We could just change this preprocessor macro here and update it to 10 or 20 or whatever we want it to be. But this is another approach. This approach saves us from having to use the size of operator at all. We could save, compile, and run this program, and we'll get the exact same results as before. Another way we could keep track of the length of an array is with a const variable. So here we could have const int size is equal to nine. This here is a const variable called size, and it's going to store the size of our array. Again, we could use this variable wherever we need the length of the array. So for example, we could have size here and size here when declaring our array. And we could save, compile, and run our program, and this will also work. So a const variable is a variable that we can't change after the initial assignment. So after we've assigned nine to this variable here, the program can't assign a different value to it later. That's why using a const variable would be a good idea for keeping track of the size of our array because we can prevent the program from ever changing this value. Now, if we're using earlier versions of C, like C89, for example, we can't do this. We can't declare the length of the array using a const variable. We would have to do something like size using the preprocessor constant or just hard code the value here or have no value at all and just allow the initialization here to set the array length. One big difference between this approach here of using a const variable and this approach here of using a preprocessor constant is that this variable here is going to be local to this function. It's going to have the scope of this function which in this case is the main function. Whereas this constant here can be used across functions. So that is one big difference. Another difference is that the local variable size will take up some space in memory. Whereas this preprocessor constant here size is going to be replaced with the value nine wherever it's used. So here, if we had size, it's going to be replaced with nine. So there's no local variable taking up space when we use this preprocessor approach. So those are two approaches we could use to just keep track of the length of an array using constants. I actually personally prefer to use constants to keep track of the length of an array compared to using the size of operator, but that's just a personal preference. We need to be careful when we use the size of operator because in some cases, it's not gonna be helpful to find the length of an array. So for example, if we have a dynamically allocated array, the size of operator is not really gonna help us. So let's include the stdlib.h library so we can use malloc to dynamically allocate space for an array. Down here in our main function, we'll declare a pointer variable called dynamic array. And we'll use malloc to dynamically allocate space for an array of ints. We'll have malloc size of int multiplied by 100. So here we've dynamically allocated space for an array able to store 100 int values. And dynamic array is actually a pointer to this array on the heap. If we use the size of operator with dynamic array, what we're going to get 
is the size of the pointer, the size of the variable dynamic array. Let's try that. We'll have printf size of dynamic array colon percent d backslash n, and then we'll output the size of dynamic array. And then if we save, compile, and run our program, we get that the size of dynamic array is eight bytes. And that's because dynamic array is a pointer to an int, and it takes eight bytes to store a pointer to an int. So size of with dynamic array is not gonna give us the size of this block of memory on the heap in bytes. If we try to use the length function like macro, it's also not going to work. So we could have int dynamic length is equal to length dynamic array. And then if we output dynamic length with printf dynamic length colon percent d backslash n and dynamic length here, if we save, compile, and run this, we get that dynamic length is two, which is not the length of the array. The function like macro length tries to use size of dynamic array to help compute the length of the array. And we know that size of dynamic array is going to return an incorrect result. And so the function like macro also produces an incorrect result. Once again, the compiler can tell what we're trying to do. And it's trying to warn us that it's not going to work where it says size of dynamic array will return the size of the pointer, not the array itself. So again, the compiler is doing a good job of trying to help us. We'll free dynamic array, just because technically here, we're using dynamically allocated memory. And so we should free the memory to ensure that we don't have a memory leak. So another important place where this same issue comes up is when we try to pass an array to a function. So let's make a function that accepts an int array as an argument. Up here, we'll have void print underscore size, and we'll have int array. So the function is going to accept an array as an argument. And here, we'll try to use the size of operator to find the length of the array. So we'll have int length is equal to size of array divided by the size of the array at the index zero. We could have just used our function like macro, but we'll do it this way instead. Then here, we're going to output the length. So we'll have printf length colon percent d backslash n, and we'll output the length here. Now let's try to use print size with our array. So down here, we're going to call print size. And we're going to pass it our array that we declared here. So we'll save, compile, and run our program. And we get a length of two. So what's going on here is that we can't really pass arrays to functions in C. What we really pass is a pointer to the array. So with print size here, really the parameter looks like this, int star array. And what really gets passed to print size when we pass the array to print size is a pointer to the array. And the pointer stores the memory address of the first element in the array. Now we can use array syntax within this function to access the array elements like this, and that's going to work. But really print size is given a pointer to the same array in main. So that's why here we get the same result as when we had a pointer to a dynamically allocated array on the heap. Really, array is a pointer to an int. So size of array is going to give us the size of that pointer. And here, the compiler is again trying to warn us. The compiler warning tells us that size of array will return the size of the pointer, not the array itself. So in C, it's not always as easy as we might hope to get the length of an array even when using the size of operator. So again, I personally prefer to just use constants or variables to keep track of the length of arrays. And when passing an array to a function, we can just have an additional parameter for the length of the array. So this is how we can find the length of an array in C using the size of operator. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.